vous cède la parole. Alors, merci beaucoup. Bonjour tout le monde. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Alors, euh, on par exemple, parler un petit peu de vaccination. To begin, I'd like to talk about vaccination a little bit. We're Thursday, so we'll start with that. I want to say today that we have reached 40 percent of the entire Quebec population has been vaccinated with at least one dose. Of course, we are very pleased with this. It's fantastic. But we have to keep going. I want to thank Quebecers who got vaccinated. And actually, tomorrow, we are opening up the new category, 35 to 39 years of age. And for the other age groups, I would like to remind you that even if your category, your age category has passed and you weren't able to take an appointment, you can still go get vaccinated because we're seeing, we're following our statistics and we see the groups, for example, 60, 65, 55 years old, we see that people are continuing to come vaccinated. So I'm repeating myself, even if your turn has passed, you can still come get vaccinated. Next Monday, next Monday is what we call it the week of the youth. So we'll open up to young adults, 18 to 34 years of age. And that's the last big blitz of the week. We are conscious of the fact that younger people have been waiting for a very long time to get vaccinated, but I'm confident that they will surprise us in a positive way with very good rates of vaccination, and we'll keep you informed of that over the next few days. Now, a few words on the sanitary situation. Apart from certain regions where we must continue to fight to reduce the transmission, I would remind you that we are truly going in the right direction. The number of cases on a seven-day moving average, which is one of our main indicators, has been decreasing, and now we're regularly under 1,000 cases a day, and that's very good news. Hospitalizations are decreasing, and the rate of positivity is decreasing as well. Once again, I want to thank Quebecers for their efforts, and I would say that it's thanks to our solidarity and the respect of sanitary measures that we are in this situation. Let's continue this way, and I think that we'll have a wonderful summer. Now, a few words on vaccination of uh, people 12 to 17 years of age. Health Canada has approved the Pfizer vaccine for the 12 to 15-year-olds. Our public health, which was very diligent, and I appreciate all the work that was done by Dr. Arruda and his team, they have told us that we can go forward with vaccination for the 12 to 17 year olds, and that's very good news. The sick, as you know, will give us a notice, an opinion, that will come in next week confirming the use of the vaccine for this clientele. But Daniel Paris' teams are already preparing to vaccinate 12 to 17 year olds and to give a first dose before the end of June. And we are aiming to give the second dose for this clientele, for our young people, for the next back-to-school period. I'll come back with my colleague, the Minister of Education, Jean-François Roberge, over the next week to give you more details on this program once we have received the opinion from the SIC, the Quebec Immunization Commission, Committee. I must talk to you about vaccine proof. Before you ask me the question, I'm sure that some of you have some questions on this topic. As promised, I'm following up with the proof of vaccination, electronic proof of vaccination, and it will be actually a QR code that will be supplied by email to Quebecers. So as of next Thursday, the 13th of May, people who have already received one dose or who will go get vaccinated will receive gradually an email asking if they want to get electronic proof of vaccination, the QR code. The important thing is that now we have the tool, and as soon as we are ready to deploy it, we will have it ready. A paper proof will continue to be given on site after vaccination. I know that you will ask me some questions on the vaccine passport, but I'm answering in advance. We have asked public health to do intensive work on this, so we will come back to you shortly 
to talk about the use of this uh, proof of vaccines. In closing, I would like to remind our objective is to vaccinate as many Quebecers as possible as quickly as possible. Since last week, appointments have been open to the general population. And over the past week, 1.2 million appointments were taken and more than 400,000 doses were administered. And since the doses came in today, we'll be able to increase the pace of vaccination over the next few days. And I'd like to mention the fact that we will have a good vaccination day today, perhaps even a record. So we're vaccinating according to the doses that we get. The more Quebecers are vaccinated, the greater our vaccine coverage will be. And we all want to have a nice summer. Thank you very much. We are now at the question period. Mr. Lacroix, Cogico, question. Hello. Are you confident that you will reach... Because I heard you last Tuesday. You've insisted quite a bit on the fact that people get vaccinated. Mr. Legault even invited people who have friends who are a bit hesitant to convince them. And I get the impression that you have a fear that we will not reach our objectives. The 75 percent, will it be surpassed? Are you sure that we will reach this according to your forecast? Not your wishes, according to your forecasts. Are you convinced that you will reach a target? Well, to use a sentence from somebody who's quite uh, famous, if the trend continues, I think we're on the right track. Because if you look, even in the, the summary document that we provide you every day, when you look at the age categories, you can see that in each one of these groups, a week after the closing of the category, we have already surpassed the 75 percent. So obviously, the objective that we had set, so the percentage of the population, of the adult population, times the 75 percent, up until now, about a week or 10 days after the end of the period, we're above 75 percent. So what I'm telling you is that if the trend continues, we should be able to surpass our objective. And that is why we are insisting, and that is why every time, every Thursday, I seem to be repeating myself, but people have to come get vaccinated because the more we are vaccinated, the greater the herd immunity. But for the time being, it's going very well. And that is why I invite young people I don't want to look like uh, somebody's uncle here, but I'm inviting young adults to really make a difference next week, because perhaps they have an opportunity to beat uh, the older people's vaccination rates. Yesterday, there were two studies that came out, one concerning Moderna. We we're even talking about a third dose, eventually a type of booster. There was a study on Pfizer as well, based on the Israeli experience, where there are rates of efficacy once a second dose is offered. We're talking about 95 percent and 96 percent prevention in deaths. The numbers are extremely interesting with this type of vaccine anyways. With the success that you're forecasting, will we surpass or will we offer that second dose earlier than expected? I understand that we've already talked about this. But do we have a better idea, perhaps, Mr. Paré, as to the calendar for the second dose? And the people who have received AstraZeneca, could they get another type of vaccine, either Moderna or Pfizer? I'll let Dr. Arruda start with the uh, mix and match of the vaccines, and then we'll go to the timeline with Mr. Paré, if you don't mind. Now, for the mix and match of the vaccines, we're still waiting for opinions. It's quite probable that it can be done. And often there are some benefits to using two different vaccines in many types of vaccinations because each has its own uh, mechanism. Some stimulate the moral or the, stimulate the antibodies and other work on the cellular memory. So these are cells that when they see the virus a few years later, they'll be able to be reprogrammed. It's as if they put into memory the recipe. So yes, it's something that will be looked at. 
And of course, we just have to make sure that there is no negative effect, there's not a decrease in immunity. And I want to take this opportunity to tell you, we talked about four people who had blood clots following vaccination, including a death, unfortunately. But we just had the confirmation of the fourth case. But the person is doing well, and they're recovering at home now. It was uh, treated adequately, and they're recovering at home. Can you say a word on Moderna, perhaps? Because I think uh, the question was on Moderna. Yes, I'll get to that. We vaccinated 520,000 people with the AstraZeneca vaccine, and that means that close to, ha well, half a million people are protected currently. Unfortunately, we had four incidents. One was deadly, but the, other, the others have survived. So just to tell you that what we have observed in Quebec is what is expected and what we've always expressed to the population. So I would like to tell you once again that the AstraZeneca vaccine is a safe vaccine. There are some countries that have based their entire vaccination campaign on this, and the people who have received, who received it can't feel bad about this. Now, for Moderna, in the studies currently, when it comes to the question of the third dose, are being followed to see what it means exactly. As to Moderna, we just uh, heard very recently that they've, pub they've published some data also on their on their young people, 12 to 17 years of age, because it's only, right now it's only offered to above 18 and up. So that will probably follow as well. It's coming from Moderna, whereas for Pfizer, it was already confirmed and adopted and approved. Now, reducing the period of time, we will, depending on the availability of doses, we will try to reduce the delays. We've already done so. We've got most of the people that where there's a high risk of CHSLD, CR, the RPAs are already being vaccinated with their second dose. And I would tell you that as soon as we get doses, of course, we will reduce the delay. But we are confident that with the delays that we have given in Quebec, people are relatively well protected. And we've given priority to the CHSLDs. Uh, the RPAs and people who are immunocompromised and people who are 70 and up. So is a calendar already established? Well, with a calendar, we've had confirmations of the number of doses from the federal government for the first dose. I've got visibility up until June. For the third quarter, from July, August and September, we're talking about forecasts, but no confirmation. Like Dr. Ruda has mentioned, in Quebec, we've given ourselves an interval of 112 days to make sure that we can vaccinate everybody with their first dose. The objective is going to be attained. So we do scenarios according to the doses that we'll have this summer to reduce this interval, this delay. So that is our objective, but it depends on how many vaccines we get. Question? I'd like to have more detail. So it's confirmed that the 12 to 17-year-olds will get a dose by the end of the school year. Yes. What I needed was an opinion from public health, which we received. We received a verbal opinion because we wanted to make sure that we were ready. But what Dr. Arruda has said, I also want an opinion from the sick for the mechanics of all of this. And that is why we wanted to announce his good news today. But we still want to have an opinion and we'll have a process to follow. And I think that's why there's so many details attached to all of this so that, that we're announcing now that once we're ready, once we have the formal opinion from the Immunization Committee, we will come inform you because parents are going to be asking themselves all sorts of questions, the schools, the private schools, the children who have a certain handicap, how will we move them? There's all of this. So we said, let's wait for the formal opinion. But we have a verbal opinion from Horatio's team and we will proceed, but it's just a matter of finalizing this over the next few days. So we're going to vaccinate in the school? Well, obviously that is the objective, to vaccinate as many people as possible in the school. I'll give you an example. The discussions that we've had in the past and that we're continuing to have with Ministre Roberge and his staff, we have to be careful with the exam period. We just want to be sure that we're doing things correctly and so that we don't disrupt anything. But it's so much easier to have children in school to vaccinate them. It avoids a lot of travel. So there's that whole logistics side that we want to finalize over the next few days. Second question, Mr. Jubey, we heard this morning 
that there are some people in palliative care who were in a hotel in Le, in Laval. Mr. Legault broached his topic earlier. You had some answers from the Justice de Laval saying that it was temporary. Do you know? Or do you know more at this stage of the game? Did they give you answers? Do you know when these people will be moved? Well, listen, it's been temporary since the beginning of the, temp of the pandemic. To me, that's not temporary. So it's very clear I've asked to have this corrected in the next few weeks, and we are in discussions with the CEO's team to see how this will be corrected very quickly. You know, my notion of uh, customer service is not the pictures that I saw in the newspaper this morning. To come back to vaccination for the 12 to 17-year-olds, you mentioned earlier that Health Canada has only approved the Pfizer vaccine for the 12 to 15-year-olds. Now, I imagine that we'll have to wait for the six uh, opinion, but is that where we're headed, or could there be vaccination with Moderna or even AstraZeneca? You have to understand that the approved vaccine is Pfizer. I gave you information of publications that were done by Moderna. It has to go through the process. We're not going to use a vaccine that is not approved in Quebec. And now for the sick opinion, we're waiting for it. But I would tell you that the probability that there be a problem with the use of this vaccine with young people is not very high. And actually, technically, we have so many chances of moving forward. That's why we're getting ready to be, we want to be ready. Before we even got the approval, we were working on this because we see things coming. It's the same thing. If Moderna, if Moderna is going to be approved, well, we'll be able to move forward with that. But there is a plan. There are some plans in place, and those are the plans that we are trying to anticipate. Thank you. I would also like to talk about the question of return to normal. Mr. Legault this morning said that Mr. Dubé, he gave you the mission of elaborating on this plan to return to normal. What do you take away from Saskatchewan's plan and what are you aiming for? What will you be presenting us in the next few weeks? Well, I'm going to keep some information for the following weeks, but what's interesting with the Saskatchewan reopening roadmap with its pros and cons, well, I think that the way that we've proceeded since the beginning is that we look at the best practices. For those who had the opportunity to consult this plan, it's quite simple, this plan. It's got three steps with the age of the population, and there's a very simple link made with the rate of vaccination. It's quite simple. We also said that in our case, and we were talking about this with Dr. Ruta's teams this morning, we like to have a bit more flexibility than only looking at one factor. We saw with the color code, and I'm referring to Dr. Lidvac's color code that we had presented to you for the first time in September of 2020, I want to give Dr. Lidvac and Dr. Arruda's team, I want them to look at the best plans throughout the world. And that is why the Premier gave that one as an example, because it's simple. But we are also looking at other plans. You saw what the CDC came out with yesterday and what happened in France. So we're taking a bit more time to align all of these plans, take the best practices. So. I read the plan over the past few days, and we're working on this so that we can come up with something that is solid with Dr. Arruda's team. It's clear that we're working on this. You can't think that we're sitting here waiting, because we all are anxious to get out of this, too. But if I have a message for you, currently, the month of May is a month of vaccination. And if we reach high rates of vaccination, these are people who are protected, we will be able to tolerate some easing of measures because in the end, we look, yes, at the vaccine coverage, but we also have to look at what's happening with the epidemiology, what are the outbreaks, what are, in what settings, how many people are in hospital, how many people are in ICU, because we'll have some younger populations who will spend more time in ICU. So I would tell you, our concentration right now, our emphasis, we're working on all of these things, but we want to make sure. And if there's something that you can do as a citizen is to get vaccinated. Truly, I'll tell you, this is the key message. And we see the rates. It warms our hearts to see these rates. So let's beat some records. Go get vaccinated.
I think it's so important because you can see that we get excited when we talk about this, but I, I think that Quebecers are just as excited as we are. I'll give you an example. In the Saskatchewan reopening plan, the rate of vaccination that they're using is 70 percent. And it's 70 percent to go to the first step, but three weeks after we've reached a 70 percent. You all saw this, right? So today, we're very pleased to announce that we are at 40. But our 40 does not take into account all of the appointments that were confirmed in the past week. So we'll get there to the 70, or regardless what the number is that is recommended by public health. But what I'm telling you is that for the time being, that's why Horatio is saying what's important is to go get vaccinated. Quebecers continue to surprise us. And to come back to your question, to beat the trend that we've got and to get to a high level of vaccination as quickly as possible. Question? The question is first for Mr. Perry. Logistically speaking, installing vaccination clinics with Pfizer in all schools in Quebec, is that really doable? Would it not be more simple to bring students by bus to the vaccination centers while respecting distancing in the buses? Listen, it's part of the challenge. You're highlighting it. And that's why in our plan, obviously, it's going to be a hybrid model. Either, well, in certain regions or in certain communities, a vaccination site will be more appropriate. But in others, we are able to move some Pfizer vaccines to some schools. And that is why, just like we did at the beginning, we will have targeted approaches to make sure that we reach the right people. And listen, we're starting to know the, the Pfizer vaccine. In our first discussions that we had in December, we were saying it's difficult, and but now we were able to find some new ways, either with dry ice or certain freezers, smaller freezers, and uh, we'll be able to adapt. And that is why we're going to work on this with the Ministry of Education, and the CIS and the CSIS will work as well with their service centers to adapt to each one of the specificities of the schools. My second question for Mr. Zubay or Aruda. Some people have written to me, young people from Secondary 5, who are wondering, for the 12 to 17-year-olds, the Secondary 5s, could they be prioritized so that they can perhaps have a graduation or a prom? If they don't have it in June, it could be in July or in August, but are we still excluding proms if they are vaccinated? It's a little bit early to answer that question. I would like to answer that question as soon as possible, but I would tell you, perhaps you'll find that I'm too focused, but right now I prefer that people get vaccinated as quickly as possible. Listen, as of Monday, Monday and Wednesday and next Friday, our week of youth. Everybody should have an appointment. Everybody should have an appointment. So those who want to go to their prom or want to do an activity, I would say the best way to give us a hand so that we can have a plan that will be as fun as possible is to go get vaccinated. A question? Mr. Dubé, don't say that I gave you an idea because we know what happened with my colleague Véronique Prince a few months ago. There are some colleagues who are excited, so I'm just making that comment. I am the one who got excited. Oh, a lot of people are excited on the social media. We often have spoken about Freedom 55. No, now, what I'm hearing is Freedom 75%. Well, listen, I've always thought that we had to surpass our objectives. And I think that you'll remember how it was calculated, I don't know, mid-March, when the Premier had committed to saying that we wanted to vaccinate Quebecers who wanted to be vaccinated, adult Quebecers, and that is how we had looked at the total population, and we removed the people under 18, and we said the percentage that was acceptable of people who wanted to be vaccinated is 75 percent. And we came up with a 5.3 million. That was the calculation. The good news that happened since then, and we have to take this good news when we have it, is that we asked to have additional vaccines, and we got them. We had a million additional vaccines. So with the good work that's done with the vaccination team, 
Well, if it's below 75 percent, are we going to ease things up? Are we going to have a summer? But if, you know, Saskatchewan, it's 70. But if we don't reach a 75 percent, then we forget everything. What I would like to tell you, and I've been repeating this for a while, and I appreciate your question, there's a balance between vaccination and public health measures. And I'm repeating this because every time that we can increase our rate of vaccination, we will have more flexibility with our public health measures. So the equation is simple. We have to get vaccinated. Did Mrs. Plant get the authorization from public health and your authorization, Mr. Minister, to announce that we're opening terraces in Montreal? Well, what I understood, well, listen, I think that I can understand, and Mrs. Plant is not the only one, there are several politicians who are in uh, campaign, campaigning this year, and I want to say things properly. It's easier to give handshakes on patios than to give a handshake in a closed room. So I would say let's be prudent with the commitments that we're making. I think people understand that we are fed up of being indoors, we are anxious for the terraces to open, we are conscious of this, but I want to remain prudent. And I say this to all politicians, please just wait until we have our recovery plan in place. Question. We're talking about how many children. I don't know if you have, you're going to use 12 to 15 or 12 to 17, but what are we aiming for for that population? Is it 75 percent as well since if they're all in school, are we aiming for 85 percent? I don't know. I, I know the number, but I just want to make sure that Danielle gives the same number that I'm expecting. It's more than 500,000 people in that age group. 12 to 15 or 12 to 17? 12 to 17, okay. And of course, we're aiming for the same objectives, and we even want to surpass them, as Mr. Zubay says. And this goes back to a couple of questions that we had earlier. The more we vaccinate that group by the end of June, 500,000 people out of an objective that we had for the adult population, imagine the percentage that we've got on our rate of vaccination. We're talking about four, five, six percent in addition to what we already have. That's huge. And that's why I think that we are happy to have this possibility. And it's an age group where the virus is circulating, so we will also decrease the impact of the virus even on other populations. So I think it's wonderful news. And it'll allow us, probably, to offer our students a school year next year that will be much more normal. And that is very encouraging. My other question is on the QR code, Mr. Zubay. You're not doing this for fun. I know you. Everything's got a reason. There's a reason for everything. The people who get this, they say, yes, I want to get it. Who is it for and what can it be used for? I'm not sure that people at home know what it's useful, know what its usefulness is. Well, the good news is that I had told you since the beginning, following Mr. Lacroix's first question, the first thing is that we want to be able to convert a paper document that we can lose because there are some people, uh, and I often heard, what happens? I lost my paper. We're all like that, or I don't have my certificate or my vaccination uh, booklet. The good news is that now you will have a second proof, and that proof is digital. Now, the good news, and I think that I'm, I'm very pleased that we found a solution for this. I was telling you the other day that we were perhaps waiting until the second dose to issue it, but we can issue it now. So that means that if you take my case or any other person who is vaccinated, I did not get proof of vaccination, but as of the 13th, we're going to go through all the files, and those who have already been vaccinated will receive their code. So that's the good news. Retroactive. Yes, it's retroactive. It'll take perhaps a week because we have to uh, implement all of this. But a few days later, even if those who have already been vaccinated will get vaccine proof by email. But what's interesting is that when the next time that you come, when I go for my second dose, my second dose is in July, well, I'm going to go back 
and they're going to update it once again. So it will show that I've been vaccinated on the 16th of March with AstraZeneca, and the second dose will be included in my QR code that I was vaccinated with whatever vaccine on such and such a date. So we're really going to the digital era, and that was a commitment that I had made. Question? To add to this, so I understand that it's a digital code. If we lose a paper that we get when we get vaccinated, it's easier uh, to, to use a QR code, but it remains vaccine proof. It is not a vaccine passport. So it's not really useful. And now you're saying, well, we asked public health to do the work, intensive work, on the vaccine passport, but now we should make a decision. What What's taking so long? Why is it taking so long to make a decision when it comes to the passport? Other states have done it. Yes, and I can let Aruda speak to this, but we've already, we've always done things correctly. I think that we said that there were some ethical issues that we wanted to clarify. So while we are, this is what I've always said, we have to be able to settle the technological side so that we can then see the use of this for travel abroad. So I will let Dr. Aruda add to this. Well, we can't minimize the importance of the proof, and the law requires people to supply information to individuals when they're vaccinated. As we've said, the booklet, the vaccine booklet can be lost. We're happy to offer this. It will be useful if you want to travel abroad because it might be asked. We may have to know what your past, your vaccine past was. In a couple of years, will there be another epidemic and we'll have to check? We'll have to see if you were already vaccinated with such and such a vaccine, if you had a reaction, etc. All of this is important. Now, as to what we can do with a passport, so I was vaccinated two doses, it's going to give me access to this type of thing. What we want to do is a good analysis given the issues, the ethical issues and other issues, and I think that there can be a usefulness. We're not saying no, we're saying we have to look at it. There are some countries who that have done it, they've had positive experiences, though others have had negative experiences, and we want to use the best evidence. We have to understand that currently, I understand that people want to know and we are working very hard on this, but people have not yet all received their first dose, et cetera. So we're working on it as quickly as possible, and we want to be clear on this. And we want to be clear on the right use and on the bad uses, because some people may use this to avoid uh, certain jobs or whatever. So we truly have to do things properly. It's our duty as scientists to look at data how does that concern public health, ethics, for example? You know, somebody who perhaps could or could not have access to a job because they have proof or not. How? That's a government decision. It's not a public health issue. Mr. Minister? Well, go ahead, Mr. Arruda. Public health is not just infectious disease. It's not just... It has to do with all determinants for individuals on inequalities in health and social inequalities as well. So that is part of our mandate. We have to make sure that people who are vulnerable, people who could have reasons not to be vaccinated or not discriminated against, that is part of our role. We do public policy, and it's up to the government to adopt them. We make recommendations, and it's up to the government to adopt them. I want to come back. When I say that we should know now, well, the ethical issues and all that kind of stuff, we want to make sure that we take the time to do the right things. We, we've been hearing about this for several weeks or even several months. It's a vaccination of young people that's starting next week. And I'm not sure that young people will be in as much of a hurry as older people to make an appointment to get vaccinated. But if they had this vaccine passport, it could be an incentive so that they can go to festivals or go to bars and restaurants. So your answer, am I wrong or is will the passport come too late to incentivize young people? I think Dr. Arruda answered you. No, Mr. Gagnon, I respect your question, but what I'm telling you, and I, I'm saying this to the young people. There's a reason why I asked to have this proof before the week of the young people next week. There will be that proof. It will be available, and we will work 
on using it in the right way, but it will be available as of next week. And I think that young people and older people, you know, I'll, I'd be very proud to be able to say I've got proof of my vaccination and everybody will be able to do this. And as I explained, it's going to be retroactive. So I'm very anxious to be able to send it to everybody who gets vaccinated. What about festival organizers and restaurant owners? Could they require that people present that QR code? I told you, and I'll repeat myself, we are not yet there. We wanted to have the digital proof. Dr. Arruda and his team will do the analysis and finalize it. They've been working on this for a while, and when it's ready, we will communicate it. Often, it's clear the more, the further ahead we get in the campaign, the more there are undecided people that we have to reach, and it can be more difficult. But I think that our young people will answer the call. And we have to trust our young people. They want to contribute. They've done, they've done it already during our interventions. Up until now, they have respected the public health measures. I can tell you that I've seen adults or even uh, elderly people who had behaviors that were not, that did not respect the measures. So we have to trust young people. And I understand that you want me to tell you, you know, where we will accept the vaccine passport. To, and it's coming. I will give you more details on this. But the message that I have for you is get vaccinated. And the greater the vaccination rate, the more we'll be able to benefit from a, an approach that will open things up. And we will see how we will use this proof of vaccination. Can we clarify the young, 12, the young people, 12 to 17, this will delay or not the second doses? Or do we have enough and we can do everything? Recently, we had some good news on Moderna, which truly brings us beyond our expectations. And we're confident that we will have the right number of doses. And I know that I'm mentioning Moderna and Pfizer, but we interchange our doses for our clientele. And that will allow us to reach the objectives that we had set for the 24th of June. And listen, we consider, we think that we'll even surpass it with the 12 to 17 year olds. That means that once we vaccinated the 12 to 17 year olds with a first dose, what news can we give for day camps that have been waiting for the green light for so long? Can we finally say, yes, we will have day camps or camps this summer? The answer is yes. And I would tell you that there's got to be a distinction between monitors and day camps versus sleepaway camps. But it's, we got these clarifications over the past few hours. And Dr. Ruda, did you want to mention this? Well, we have to understand that we consider that, first of all, the day camps or the sleepaway camps, people sleep there, there is greater proximity. Well, probably that we'll be able to get organized in order to have two doses for these people. Now for the day camps, I just want to say, the question is, when will we be able to, well, it's soon. Soon they will be considered as priority workers, like the monitors, like people in daycares or whatever. So if they show us proof of employment, they'll be able to get vaccinated in category nine, like the essential workers. Exactly. So that means that somebody who's 17 does not have to wait until the end of June, but can get vaccinated sooner because that category is already open. So as long as they can show proof of employment from the camp, well, they will be in Category 9. Question? I want to know, how many second doses do you think you've given that you will have given by the 24th of June? Our objective is 500,000. Will we be able to do a bit more than that? Maybe, but the objective, Mrs. Kret, if you look at our executive summary that we publish every day, there are two portions. There's the first doses and then the second doses. We always aim to do at least 500,000 second doses, uh, CHSLDs, RPAs, and healthcare workers for the 24th of June. Yes. Now, the second dose for immunocompromised people. I got some emails today from people who have obtained 
their appointment to get it within four weeks, and others are still waiting. So is that settled, Mr. Dubé? Yes, I have signed a directive at the beginning of the week to give the conditions. It's for there's hospital settings, specialized clinics, pharmacists as well who have specific clientele. So the directive has been sent. It should be applied quickly and we'll follow the situation. It's, well, the directive is that people who are immunocompromised, who are in a certain category of immunosuppression, so either people on dialysis, uh, there's a whole series of situations where we ask hospitals to give vaccines within four weeks. And it's the same thing for certain pharmacists who serve these clients. They can call their patients to move up their vaccination to four weeks. So they should be getting a call. Yes. If it's a pharmacist following them or through their hospital. And if they have any concerns, I think that they can call their doctor. Two last questions in French. For people under 14, what will be the procedure? Will both parents have to give their consent so that the vaccination of their child has to occur? Well, we have to understand that for vaccination, a child above 14 can consent, like for any other care. But the practice is that in school settings, because we'll manage this with schools, people are used to getting authorizations for vaccines. There are some conditions that are quite specific. It's either the mother or the father or both, depending on the, the status of the family. So that will be done like for other vaccines. And one last question in French. If all teens have received at least one first dose before back to school, will they have to wear face masks in September? That's a good question. I think that we'll have to evaluate it. I know that you don't like this answer. We'll have to look at the epidemiology, where we are, etc., but we believe that we'll be able to ease certain measures. Does that mean that we will remove the mask before having two doses? It remains to be seen. It'll depend on the situation and the control of outbreaks. We will now go to the English questions. Uh, Monsieur, a uh, question I want to ask you is, uh, it's been asked in French, but I'll ask again in English. Mayor Plante uh, says she wishes to see uh, terraces of restaurants open by June 1st. Is she dreaming in color? Well, I, I think we, um, as I said before, um, all, all the mayors of the province that will be in the election this, this year would like to shake hands on a terrace as opposed to in a, in a closed area. So I think, I, I, and I, I'm a politician, so I understand her wish. But uh, what, I, what I said also is that we want to be prudent right now by trying to put a date on a certain measure, which is the terrace, before we have a global plan. And that global plan, that's what we're working on right now. So I would, I would just ask, all politicians, not only Madame Plant, but because she's not the only one that has asked those things. And we understand that, that demand. I, I, I really share the, the urgency of having this plan. But uh, as the, the Premier has said uh, this morning, we are working on it. And the sooner we can give an indication to what will be those, uh, those new measures, we will provide them. Now, the QR code. Uh, I understand it will be sent to everyone who's getting their vaccine or who got their vaccine. Will this be considered a form of vaccine passport? Not at this time. I just want to clarify that right now the piece of paper that you receive when you get vaccinated is just a proof that you have been vaccinated. It's not a passport, okay? So that's the same thing. We just go from paper to digital. That's the, the first step. After that, how this, this proof of vaccination will be used, this is the question that we've asked Santé Publique. But for now, the good news is we have now put in place the, the process to issue a QR on the demand of the vaccinated person. So we will send an email 
and that person will be asked, would you like to receive a QR code? And then that person will confirm by, by uh, courriel and will send it to, to them. Cathy Sonnet, Radio-Canada, CBC. Um, earlier uh, this week, uh, Ontario has uh, released its guidelines for um, long-term care homes. And uh, uh, now that people in CHSLD, most of them got their uh, second dose. And, um, and we, in private residences here, like people are getting their second dose too. And they, they, there is like a need for seniors to know when they'll be able to get their back, their, get their lives back, right? Some of them spend so much time in their room yeah. alone. So when are you planning and what do you see as reopenings for them? I have so much empathy for those persons. I'm talking to my mother right now. My mother is in one of those RPA and um, I think about her every day when I, I'm being asked when. So I, I share that demand and my mother is asking the same question. Okay. So what I think I would tell all the mothers and fathers or the grandfather that we are working on that. We understand that. But the first thing is we need to vaccinate them a second dose. We need to really uh, fulfill our commitment to get that second dose. So we, we have a little percentage of, uh, of residents of uh, long-term home that have, have started. Uh, we will respect our commitment of uh, CHSLD by May the 8th. It's going very, very well right now. This is the last week. RPA will be really in ramp up over the next few weeks uh, when as soon as possible. That's, that's the best answer that I can give you right now. Sooner than later, but I want to say also that this weekend it's going to be Mother Day. And mm -hmm. we want your mothers to be in safe conditions. Please don't forget that there is still a need, even if yeah. they will receive one dose, to have precautions and hygiene, distancing and using of masks. I know. Uh, I know it's difficult, but don't 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 take risks with your mother. That's the best thing you can do is to protect them for a longer time and longer life, and probably having a normal mother days next year. Okay. Uh, um, regarding the vaccination of teens, teens, it 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 does foster lots of uh, excitement for some parents, and other parents are already thinking. Oh, how is this going to take place? So can you talk to us about the logistic challenges and also the fears uh, surrounding vaccines? Let's start with Dr. Arruda and then okay. Mr. Paré. I think that the Pfizer vaccine and Moderna are going to be safe for those kids. I think we will give the mo best information to parents, I think. There is always, I would say, some dollar and the injection side, sometimes some fever, some headaches. But this is great because this is meaning that the vaccine is working. And at the same time, people will not get the disease. And most of youth people have a better immunity after doses because their system is, is, is a new one, you know. So I, I think we will give the parents I would say, the good information, and even the kids, because some of them who are 14 years old and more can uh, ask questions. We will answer those questions. And from the logistics, I think we are doing, uh, working, and uh, my colleague can say, with the schools, boards, and with the schools to make the things easy. All I can uh, all I can add to all these comments, since we're going to work with the uh, with the Sunda service and the the, the, the CISSS to make sure that the experience uh, for uh, for our teens uh, uh, will, will, will be fine. And again, the vaccination will be completed before summertime, which is to me was so probably the best. School or in vaccination centers? Well, just like I mentioned in French, it's going to be a hybrid uh, uh, hybrid scenarios. We just want to make sure uh, the, that we have the right vaccine at the right place for the right school and for the right group, uh, uh, the right age group. 
So, so the plan will be uh, will be different in some uh, in some regions. But the good news, they will the vaccine will be offered, and we hope that the that it will accept to be vaccinated. Raquel Fletcher, Global. Madam Fletcher. Uh, yes. Good afternoon. Um, we've been talking about um, for some time that we would need to have uh, adolescents and teenagers uh, vaccinated in order to get to a certain, I don't want to say herd immunity, but get to a certain percentage of the population being vaccinated. Uh, now that we're, we're able to vaccinate 12-year-old and, and older, do you have any projections of what that will mean uh, globally, uh, what the global portrait will look like if we'll be able to get to that 75% faster, how much faster, et cetera? No, no, go ahead. Uh, as it is, uh, I would say, half a million cases that will add to the vaccine uh, person immune, immune. And as the virus is circulating a lot in those populations, this is good news. This is, uh, I would say, uh, great because uh, you know that in schools and uh, with people, youth, youth people have a lot of activities and everything. So, and I would say more we get vaccinated, the more we can deconfine. You know, plus on est vacciné, plus on va pouvoir déconfiner. Je pense que c'est ça qu'il faut retenir. I think that's what we have to take away. Mr. Dubé, you wanted to add something? No, I just want to say that what I said in French, and that's a good question, 500,000 on the total population of 8.5 million, if we have a good success, that would be between 4 and 6 percent that we add to the vaccination rate. This is huge. This is huge. So depending, do we... Are we going to be able to have 300,000, 400,000, or close to the maximum, which could be possible too, depending on the, the way we organize. And that's the reason we're pleased to announce it today. We will have the time to prepare the parents. They will have the time to think about it. We will have the time to organize within the school. That's the reason we want the presentation with, um, with Ministre Roberge and have somebody of health, uh, public health to answer the question on the specific question of the parents. So I'm just, I'm, we're so pleased with this news because it's good for the people that will be vaccinated, but it will be good for the population in general, because as we said, we're back to school in September and this is behind us. So I think this is a, a very important news that we got uh, uh, from. And I want to say to teenagers, please get vaccinated. That's the way to get liberty. And I really want to say that. I, I, I really want them to prove to us that they can collaborate. And I'm sure they will. I'm sure. Because they have been a lot, I would say, uh, with us. Uh, they, they suffer a lot from Since one, two years Sorry. of their adolescence. And I think they want to see their friends. And the best way to do it is to get vaccinated. But please, show older people <laughs> that you are better than we are. Um, what age uh, will uh, adolescents and teenagers be able to get the vaccine without parental uh, permission? It's 14 years old and more. But in fact, I would say that in school practice, we ask parents too, but a child could decide for himself that he wants to get vaccinated by 14 before we need the parental consent. Une petite précision. Vous aviez un message, Monsieur Arruda, pour la fête des mères. Mr. Arruda, you're inviting people to be careful for Mother's Day. Can you repeat that in French, please? Yes. What I want to say is it's Mother's Day this weekend. I know quite well that everybody wants to gather with family, close to their mother, and my spouse as well, my children. I would like to be able to gather with everybody, but it's not possible yet. And what I want to say is that the biggest gift that we can give our mother is health. And, and it's happened, you know. There were small gatherings uh, in homes. Even if the person got one dose of the vaccine, because it's not 100 percent effective, we don't want to contaminate them and have them end up in hospital. So I invite you once again this year to be prudent. There's a, an ad that was done, f distancing, wear your mask, wash your hands, and avoid gatherings that are not necessary, because in order to be able to celebrate Mother's Day next year, this is what we need to do. 
And I'm saying this not not to destroy nice moments, but I want people to be conscious that it can happen. To conclude, Mr. Jabe, you said that the digital proof, it will be indicated that it's a first dose or second dose? Yes. You will have, I can't wait to show you, but you will have a QR code. When you get your email, you'll have the QR code, and then you will have a narrative portion that will say, here is a vaccine that I got on this date, etc. And then when we update it, well, you'll have information on the second dose. So there will be one part that you can just leave on your device or on your computer, but there will also be, you, you can print it if you want to have it with you, kind of like what we do with a boarding pass for a plane. For the second dose, it'll be updated? Yes. If you take the case of somebody who that you're too young, but let's say somebody who's already been vaccinated. You were vaccinated? Wow, okay. And there are some things that I don't understand in life, but that's okay. Now, the person, let's say you got, you're going to get an email within perhaps three or four days after the 13th of May, and you'll be told, will you, do you want to have a digital vaccination proof? In your case, you will say yes, and then you will get this. And once you go to your second appointment, which is probably already set, well, you will be you will be asked, do you want to receive an update? And you will say yes, and then you'll get another email with the updated information. So you will have your QR code with the two descriptions of the two vaccines that you've received. With somebody who's already gotten COVID and who in principle would only get one vaccine dose, well, currently, well, we'll have to see. That's interesting. It's an interesting question. Currently, what will be there is only the vaccines. We are not talking about confirming immunization. So we are going to confirm that the doses were received. How does Ottawa see this work? Because Ottawa is also working on the implementation of a vaccine passport. So seeing that Quebec will have digital proof, does that fit into, well, people are working together. Yes, people are working together so that we can have something that will be standardized with our, you know, our IT teams and our, our federal relations teams. Everybody's working on this now. Thank you very much. Happy Mother's Day.